GDPR are the new regulations that have been brought in by the EU. I mean, it actually stands for the General Data Protection Regulation. And the distinction with this regulation as opposed to former directives from the EU is law. And the whole idea behind it is to have consistency across the EU and it's part of the General Human Rights Act. So that's really where it's come, of, come about, is to bring about a, a consistency for all EU members, where before if you have the Data Protection Act, this could be interpreted into law by individual countries. And it's led to a lot of disparity in terms of the interpretation and the exercise of data protection laws. We live in an age now where your digital persona, you are information in many ways, that uh, our whole lives are governed by it and it's also an inalienable right for privacy. The, the, the big change is really over the issue of the ability of the authority. Now we have the Information Commissioner in, in many respects. He's going to get teeth um, for prosecution, but the penalties are going to be rather much larger at the moment in the UK. It's around about £500,000 is the top penalty. The big change will be around the ability and the, you, you'll have to actually have mandatory reporting if you're breached, you get 72 hours to report. You can get a fine either of 4% of your global turnover or 20 million, depending on which one is greater at the time. The other key things around that is the right to be forgotten. So as a client or any personal information that an organisation holds on you, you as an individual, can request for that information to be deleted and you then have to prove the organisation that it has been deleted. So these are some of the big changes that are coming about. The extent of the fine, I think, can be detrimental because you have a number of smaller companies which will be intolerable for them. So it has to be proportionate the types of fine. 4% of global turnover is a considerable amount of money as well as 20 million. But the fining also will be used to fund the respective authorities that administer GDPR. The, the other key thing um, will be there are a number of technology vendors that are using GDPR. Very much like if you're old enough to remember Y2K uh, as a tool really to start marketing in their products and their wares where you know, the real emphasis of GDPR at this moment in time would be seeing where you are, what is the scope gap, and leveraging the good practices that you should already have in play. But the, you know, the whole impetus behind GDPR is to raise the standard of protection for individuals of their information. So that it can only be a good thing. If we're talking about data protection and security, it, this goes from education of our staff, we do a number of phishing attacks to see, you know, to, to keep everyone abreast, as well as the introduction of technologies such as um, we've got vendors such as Mimecast, which allow people to protect their emails coming in and out as well, and filtering out what we call malware and attacks. We do regular penetration testing on our software, uh, and we've adopted a, a total ethos within our development right across the board, privacy through design. So our security sits front, centre and back. You won't be able to be in certain supply chains unless you are GDPR ready and then eventually compliant.